A coral is a, is, is a colony of little tiny creatures uh, that they call a polyp. Uh, they're sort of like a little tiny sea anemone or a little tiny jellyfish lying on its back. And each one of those uh, produces a tiny, tiny amount of limestone. So it produces its own tiny little skeleton that sticks it to the bottom. And then over time they bud and they bud and they bud and they bud and they make a colony of hundreds and then thousands and then tens of thousands of these individuals, all of which have their own little tiny bit of limestone skeleton, and then that builds up into what we would call a coral. A coral reef is the accumulation of hundreds, thousands of those corals, individual corals, live, die, live, die, live, die, over thousands, tens of thousands of years to basically build up into what we would call a reef. Here at Round Hill, uh, we have the Round Hill Reef Garden Project. Uh, it's a four-year project through which we're growing 5,000 corals uh, through propagative measures. So we're taking very small bits of coral from the reef, from the existing population of the bay that are already adapted and comfortable and happy living in the bay. Um, propagating them in nursery culture in situ in the water, in the sea, and then planting them back down onto the reef within the garden space, which is 3.1 hectares immediately in front, right out here, which we would describe as Round Hill's house reef. The Round Hill Reef Garden project would be a collaboration between Round Hill Resorts and Villas, local scientific technicians, who would be me, and the community because we need collaboration with the community to have um, a more or less non-fished area in order to allow the, the elements that keep the coral alive to flourish. Fish, lobsters, all of that type of thing. And a large and important element of that is uh, Mr. Bingham as our spear fisherman come reef gardener who is on this reef several times a week actively gardening it in the same way that you would pick worms and snails off your tomato plants in your backyard. He's out here picking algae and small predators and so on and so forth off what are ultimately his corals um, in order to keep this place vibrant. And it is, it has been, from a scientific point of view, observing the impact of one man with a bag picking algae and killing snails, it has been incredibly interesting. So a coral is made up of polyps, which are those tiny little jellyfish creatures that make their skeleton. And each one of those can more or less survive on its own. So, with a lot of care and attention, we can cut off a few of those, put those up into a nursery structure where they will be protected and where they'll continue to grow and be healthy, and then they'll heal. And we'll basically get a new coral from that initial piece. From that larger new coral, we can cut that up again and continue to propagate them again and again and again, as you might do roses in your yard. Once we've grown those out to enough to it to a to a number, and those corals are each individually quite large, we can then plant those back down onto the reef bottom, where they will adhere themselves and they'll continue to grow. So we're doing that 5,000 times over four years, and it's. Um, so far, so good. Uh, currently, we've set about 4,000, 4,200 corals to the bottom. There's another 600 in the nursery currently that need to go to the bottom. And then sort of finish up the last few and hand over in September. And when it's finished, the, the final phase of this project is a formal handover to uh, Mr. Bingham, to Weston, the coral gardener or the reef gardener where he will become responsible not so much for the not for the nursery anymore but for all of those corals so we will hand over to him rather than to necessarily to the resort because we've spent he has been great for all of these years and really vital in making sure the project has worked the reef at round hill when round hill opened was dominated by two species of coral both of which were bright bright gold so if i was in an upper balcony looking down onto the sea the reefscape looked gold 
that reefscape is no longer dominated by those corals. It's now dominated primarily by algae that are brown and green. And so the dominant color that I look at when I look down from above is those browns and greens. It's a less productive scenario. It doesn't grow to protect us on the shoreline. Um, and ultimately it's just not as pretty. So a big goal within this project for me is that I want to return the reefscape to gold. Absolutely, you can visit. The house reef on which this is based is never more than 50 meters from shore. So from the beach, you're hard pressed to go 50 meters beyond it. Uh, so basically the, the, the house reef area in the sort of three hectares directly in front of the beach is the area of the space. It's not terribly big. The nurseries are in place and visible for another few months. And then after that, you will see the coral, the differences in the coral between here and there or here and anywhere outside of. Um, and as time goes on and those corals continue to grow, it'll only become more and more vibrant. Um, there will be formal snorkeling events and glass bottom boat opportunities for more formal visitation, but ultimately uh, just to grab your mask and snorkel and go is the point. Go have fun. Feeding fish is problematic. In Jamaica, we have a tradition of carrying bread and feeding it to fish. Well, starches don't really exist in the ocean, and a lot of fish can't really digest them, which means they fill up on bread, and then they don't do the activities on the bottom of the ocean that they're necessarily, that we sort of want them to do. So eating algae, uh, uh, eating snails, and all of these types of things, they're already full and they don't really do them. The bread is also not particularly nutritious, so feeding fish bread is something that we'd like you to not do. Don't touch. Try not to touch the bottom. Uh, most of what you might be stepping on, whether it does look it or not, is probably alive. The corals themselves are quite delicate. You, will, you can either, remember they're just a little, uh, they're a little jellyfish thing over a hard limestone skeleton and they will squash. Or if they're a branching type, they will break if you kick them. So just try to pay attention to where your feet are, to where your hands are, and try not to stand up if you can, if you can help it. Um, and when you stand up, try and stay in the bathing areas or try and only stand up in the locations where your guide has told you it's okay. Yeah, within the idea of don't waste, we've got lots of opportunity to um, buy local. So we've got here at Round Hill, we've got fishermen who live right there. And the hotel puts a lot of effort into buying from local suppliers. Uh, meat, vegetables are actually, a lot of the vegetables are produced right here on site. Everything else comes from uh, farmers within the immediate north coast area. The fish, a lot of our fish come from locally. That's a nice start specifically to this hotel. But for me, li even living in a city, I can know my farmer. It's a nice way to sort of minimize your impact from the specific point of view of waste. These are things that didn't have to travel a long way. They didn't require a lot of extra um, fertilizers and so on, or pesticides to get them there, or refrigeration. It's something that's right there. It's fresher, and it's arguably a whole lot better.